why isn't my ex contacting me during no contact? You know, if you've watched videos from other people that say, hey, you just gotta do no contact, your ex is gonna come crawling over broken shards of glass to beg for you back or something like that, and it's just not happening. Why, what are you supposed to do, all that good stuff. That's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. But first, my name is Clay with ModernLove.Life where we help you get the great loving relationship that you're looking for without having to play mind games, without having to play hard to get, and without having to pretend to be someone or something that you are not because you deserve to be loved for the unique, amazing, and wonderful person that you are. And if you agree with me, help a guy out with his YouTube channel, hit that thumbs up button for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel down below, also for the algorithm, I think that helps somehow. If you are having a hard time with no contact as well too, what has been your experience? Leave a comment down below in the comment section as well too. All this stuff is really helpful for the YouTube channel and it helps us kind of reach out and get more people. Um, you know, I've been doing this for a lot longer than most other people on YouTube that talk about breakups and stuff, but I just never really bothered to actually figure out how to actually grow a YouTube channel. I just kind of like upload some videos and like, okay, let's see what, how they do. But now I'm starting to get serious about it. I've been doing so for about a year or so. And so it helped me out a lot if you hit the thumbs up button and all that stuff I said before. But let's go ahead and get into this. So you saw a video from someone. They said, do no contact or radio silence. And then wait for your ex to come crawling back to you over broken shards of glass. And uh, you, you've been doing it and it hasn't been working. Your ex has not been contacting you. Your ex has not been crawling back over broken shards of glass. You even left some broken shards of glass across your welcome mat just for such a purpose, but they have yet to be crawled over. Um, and so what's going on? What are you supposed to do? So first things first, why are they not contacting you? Well, we have to look at this and there's really one core reason but there's a couple of different splinters of that. So the main core reason is it feels better for them to not be in contact with you than it does for them to actually be in contact with you. And there's a lot of reasons that they might feel that way, but that's kind of the core reason for all of this. But, um, you know, first and foremost, they might still have a lot of hurt feelings about things that happened before, during, or after the breakup. The two of you might have fought, the two of you might have had some sort of betrayal, some sort of heated conflict or something, and they're just kind of still shaken and upset by that. And maybe they're still holding on to some sort of grudge, some sort of hurt feelings, some sort of resentment or bitterness or something like that, and that needs to kind of get worked through. Now, there's a couple ways you can do it. You know, of course, no contact is one way to kind of decrease the volume on some negative emotions. It shouldn't be the only only way that you do it, but you know, yeah, time can decrease the volume on the intensity of some of the emotions that we feel. So, you know, if your ex is upset with you, they may be less upset with you a week later or a month later or a year later, you know? I think I've told before on this channel uh, stories about how I, um, you know, me and my big ex, we broke up and then I think it was like a year and a half or two years or something later, I was going through this period of time where I just wanted to get right with all the people in my life that I wasn't 100% right with. And so I, I reached out to her for the first time after like quite a while and I was just like, hey, I'm sorry for all these ways that that I, you know, inadvertently hurt you during our breakup and blah, blah, blah. And, and she wrote back and she was like, oh, thank you so much for saying that. And we had like this great little conversation and discussion and then it started getting into some weird, like weird flirting stuff, which was strange for me because she was like engaged to someone else at the time. So I'm like, okay, it's a little weird. I, I Just me personally, I feel a little bit weird going over uh, a ring on a finger. So um, that's, that's one of my values that I don't, uh, go against. So that's when I kind of recused myself from the situation. <laughs> but, but another reason that uh, your ex may not be contacting you during no contact is that they believe that you're doing no contact because it's some sort of like mind game. You know, maybe it's something that you heard about on YouTube, or maybe it's something that you heard about on the internet somewhere. Maybe you're trying to, you know, do some sort of power play on them or something. Uh, and they're just thinking like, okay, well, you're trying to get me to crack so that I can contact you and then you're gonna like hang it over my head or something like that. And obviously, if they think that you're doing that kind of thing, then yeah, they're not gonna walk into it and just be like, oh, I admit it, I was wrong. I miss you. Yeah, that, that can happen. That happened with me and my big ex once, but you know, she really, really missed me at that point in time. And if your ex isn't missing you to that degree, then th they may not feel compelled to actually contact you during no contact, okay? And so what, what this means 
is that you have to, well, first of all, this whole thing is symptomatic of the two of you not seeing each other as being on the same team. You see each other as being on opposite teams. Otherwise, why would you be concerned that the other person is playing mind games on you? Why would you be, why would they be concerned that you're playing mind games on them? Um, and this is definitely not a setup for having a great relationship. So you want to be sure to, you know, cinch this in the bud as quickly as possible through something like what we would call, you know, the same team conversation. Okay. We've talked about that uh, over the past couple months on this channel. We talk about it inside of our course, effortless connection, all that good stuff. But I would really recommend that you set the context for the two of you being on the same team first and foremost, um, rather than getting stuck and entrenched in these two polar opposite sides and saying like, okay, I have to defend myself against you. I have to play mind games against you. You're playing mind games against me. You're defending yourself against me. And we're just kind of like in our little trenches, kind of like peeking out at each other and like in kind of in attracted and in love with one another, but kind of enemies with one another at the same time. It's kind of a weird dynamic. But if we can get past that and say, okay, look, I know it's weird right now. I know that it can be kind of confusing. I'll admit I'm confused sometimes. You know, we used to be in a relationship, now we're not. And I wouldn't blame you if you were confused from time to time too about how we fit into each other's lives. But I just want to make it clear that I'm not going out of my way to hurt you or play any mind games with you. I don't think you're doing that with me. So let's just agree that we're on the same team here. And rather than being awkward and confused alone, we can be awkward and confused together and find out something that works for us in terms of how we can fit into each other's lives. Let's not force anything that's not there. I think it's best if we're just friends. I want to make that clear. But let's just kind of be on the same team and figure this all out. Is that something you can agree to? And this usually goes over really well from you know the clients that I've worked with that have done something like this. And so if you can kind of set this context up, we can kind of erase that, those, those battle lines, so to speak, and get the two of you actually on the same team so you don't have to worry about them manipulating you, using you, anything like that. They don't have to worry about you manipulating them, using them or anything like that. And then this whole no contact thing stops becoming any sort of concern about whether it's a mind game, a power play or anything like that, because in the end it's like, okay, I don't need to be defensive or on guard against my own teammate because we're on the same team. I'll just talk to them and say, hey, do you need some space? Hey, are you feeling uncomfortable talking to me? Hey, are you holding back because of something that's going on? Let me know about that. Or maybe it's just in my head. Maybe you're just really busy with that thing at work. And we can just actually talk it out rather than assume that we're enemies in some sort of uh, implicit kind of way. The other thing is you have to be doing no contact for the right reasons, okay? I've talked about this many times. We have our whole video series on no contact. It's right up there. It's not the same no contact you've probably heard from other people, but no contact isn't just something that everyone has to do all the time. I know that you've heard that it's something that you have to do all the time. I know that you've heard that it's about power, that it's about reclaiming your powers, about making them miss you. It's about, you know, twisting the knife in them so that they feel the pain and you turn the tables on them and use reverse psychology and all that stuff. But again, that's just a symptom of being on opposite teams, not the great foundation for a good relationship. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to start with the foundation for a good relationship, get on the same team, but no contact. Yes, there is a time and place for it. Okay. Yes, there absolutely is. I've talked about this many times before, but if you and your ex being in contact with one another is not helping the emotional connection, it's damaging the emotional connection, it's driving the two of you further apart because, I don't know, maybe the two of you are fighting or something like that every time you're talking or there's disagreements or whatever, then of course, yeah, something's not working and let's stop being in contact and figure out what we need to do in terms of you know correcting our way of being, in terms of coming across a different way, in terms of getting out of damage control mode, in terms of whatever needs to take place, that's what we need to do, right? But if the two of you are connecting and it's bringing the two of you closer together and it's causing a stronger emotional foundation, then why do no contact? I mean, if it's working, why fix? what's not broken. So, so you got to look at it this way. I, I know that there's a lot of other people saying you always 100% have to do no contact all the time, but I, I, it's, it, it's not true. If there's ever a point in time where you're just turning your brain off and saying like, well, you know, everyone else says I should do that, then that's probably a warning sign right there. You know your relationship better than I do. You know your relationship better than either of these other jokers on YouTube do. You need to feel into it and you need to figure out what makes the most sense for where the two of you are at and what's going to make the most sense for the emotional connection, okay? And if it's no contact, 
if it's getting yourself out of damage control mode, if it's stopping yourself from doing more harm to the connection, then sure, do no contact. But if, if, if that's not the right thing for you, then hey, no worries, don't do it. Do something else instead. Do something like that same team conversation I just mentioned a few moments ago. Then of course we did talk about time lessening the negative emotional intensity that, that can happen. It can make things easier for them to be responsive or easier for them to actually pick up the phone and contact you. And yeah, you know, like I said before, sometimes no contact isn't the best strategy. Sometimes you just gotta pick up the phone and call them or text them or whatever and get the contact initiated. You don't have to do these like passive aggressive things like I'm just gonna do no contact and then they contact me because it's about power, because it's about my ego or whatever. Like if, if, if your ego is that important that you'd rather lose the relationship, okay, fine, you can do that. I'm not an ego coach, I'm a relationship coach. So don't expect me to coach you on how to have the most aggrandized ego out there. Is, is there even such a thing as an ego coach? I don't know. But if you wanna have a great relationship, sometimes you just gotta initiate contact yourself, okay? Sometimes you just gotta initiate contact, get the ball rolling, and get that emotional connection going. And if that's something that you want a little bit of help with, that's what we do talk about inside of our course called the X-Solution Program right down there. Check it out if it's right for you. If not, no worries. But um, yeah, there it is. If you do like this video, if you like what we're talking about here, if you like the idea of not always having to do no contact and finally sweeping up those broken shards of glass that you've left on your doormat so that your ex doesn't have to crawl over them, um, then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. It helps a guy out with his YouTube channel. Help me out with that. Um, leave a comment down below on what your experience has been like with no contact. What has been the biggest benefits of it? What have been the biggest drawbacks of it? And more importantly, how has it affected your ability to have a great quality connection with your ex or with someone else in your life. Please share that down in the description box. Um, if you want to learn more about our take on no contact, of course, we have our ultimate no contact guide over here. And we also have this video over here that you might find useful. But once again, my name is Clay. Please take care and I will talk to you next time.